In this video, we're going to take a look at the process of replacing the main board in the Suma S-Class 2 Series Vinyl Cutter. To replace the main board, you will need a Phillips head screwdriver and the main board, part number KIT-2000. It is also helpful to have a small flat head screwdriver on hand, as well as a smartphone or camera available to take reference photos. If communication with the cutter is still possible, create a backup of the settings on the cutter. If communication isn't possible, skip this step. To create a backup, remove all media from the cutter and reboot it in service mode. This is done by touching and holding the top left corner of the display while the machine starts up. Then select service mode when the option is presented. Connect the cutter to your computer with either Ethernet or USB and start Suma Cutter Control to connect. Select the backup option located in the bottom left-hand corner of the program and choose a location to save your backup. The backup will be saved as a .plt file and by default is named with the serial number of your cutter. It may take 30 seconds or more to save your backup file. After the file successfully saves, Suma Cutter Control will return to its idle state. To remove the main board, first disconnect the cutter from power and remove any LAN connectors or USB sticks from the machine. Next, remove the right-hand cover by the touch screen. The cover is fixed by five screws. Note that the fifth screw is on the back panel next to the yellow warning label. When sliding away the cover, be careful to avoid damaging the flat ribbon cable running from the display to the main board. Detach the display ribbon cable from the main board by gently releasing the slide locks on both sides of the connector with a fingernail or small flathead screwdriver. Slide the cable out of the connector and put the cover assembly aside. At this point, it is important to pause before proceeding. There are multiple connectors on the main board, some which are identical, and some that can be attached to incorrect locations. Take photos of all connectors and wire routing on the main board before continuing. Remove the flat cables for the head by lifting the slide lock tabs on both sides of the connector and sliding the cable free. If you're replacing the main board on a drag knife cutter, there will only be one cable instead of the two cables and tangential cutters. Now, disconnect the remaining connectors from the main board. Remember to pay close attention to the original position of the connectors as they must go back to the same position when reinstalled. Several of the main board connectors have locking mechanisms. If a gentle tug will not release these connectors, tilt the connector slightly away from the lock tab while lifting it free. The main board is mounted with four screws. Remove all four screws and lift the board out of the cutter. Next, move the cables out of the way and slide the new main board into place. Be sure to align the USB and Ethernet ports with their openings in the machine chassis. Mount the board to the cutter with the four mounting screws. The board is a tight fit, so be sure to thread all four screws before fully tightening any of them. After the board is mounted, reattach the ribbon cables. Check that the slide lock is open on both sides of the connector. Then slide the cable fully into the connector. You may need to wiggle the cable while pressing to insert it completely. Use the markings on the cable to ensure that the cables are inserted fully and evenly. The markings on the cable should be parallel to the connector if it is lined up properly. Keep pressure on the cable while closing the locks on the connector. Press down on the connectors to double check that they are fully closed. Next, reattach the remaining connectors. Use the reference photo taken earlier as needed to ensure accuracy. After the mainboard connectors are in place, reattach the right end cover. The end of the cutter chassis has a lip that fits into the bottom of the end cap. Be sure to align the chassis lip and the bottom of the cover properly during this step.
Once the cover and chassis are lined up properly, do not slide the cover completely into place as the display ribbon cable needs to be reattached first. When reattaching the ribbon cable, make certain that the cover is held into place to prevent any damage to the ribbon. Minimize twists in the cable to maximize the length available for reconnection. Check that the connector is open. If it isn't, slide the lock tabs out. Slide the cable into the connector until the shiny metal contacts are no longer visible. When the cable is inserted correctly, the lettering should be even width and parallel to the edge of the connector. Now push the locking tabs in to secure the cable. Next, finish sliding the cover into position. You may need to pull on the edge slightly to clear the power fixture. Remember to be careful to protect the ribbon cable from snagging or binding. Reinsert and tighten all five screws, securing the cover in place. You may need to press on the cover slightly to properly thread the screws. Reconnect the power and data cables, then power up the machine in service mode by holding your finger on the top left corner of the screen while booting up. Then select service mode when prompted. Check the serial number label to find the correct machine type and choose that option and press apply. Now reboot the cutter. If you made a backup before changing the mainboard, locate that to restore. If a backup was not created, a factory default backup can be downloaded from Suma.com. Open a browser and head to Suma's website. From there, navigate to support, then software firmware, and finally download backup and activation files. Select the I want to retrieve my activation codes and backup files option from the menu. Enter the cutter serial number. Agree to the privacy policy and click Submit. On the next screen, select the Download Backup Files link. Choose a location for the file and click Save. Now launch Suma Cutter Control and connect to the cutter. Click the Restore button at the bottom left-hand corner of the window. Find the Save.plt backup file and click Open to upload the file to the cutter. The configuration restore should take around 30 seconds to complete. The serial number on the mainboard must be set to match the one indicated on the serial number label. Close out of Suma Cutter Control if it is open. Then restart the program in service mode by holding the Shift key during launch. Note that service mode is unavailable if the program is launched in Windows Administrator mode. Click on the service button, then the serial number button. Enter the unique serial number for your cutter and select OK. If you restored from a current local backup, then your mainboard replacement is complete and your cutter is ready for production. If you restore from the factory backup, you will need to perform opus calibration, knife calibration, and then set your cutting pressures. Look out for our other videos showing how to complete these additional steps.